Hi. So uh, I'm fairly astounded. I'm astounded that uh, when I log on to an e-commerce website every six months or so to buy something as trivial as, say, vacuum cleaner bags, that website knows a huge amount about me, my buying habits, probably predicting my socio-economic group, and maybe even if I've upgraded to that latest Dyson or not. But when I go back to my doctor in six months' time, uh, they have nothing on me, hardly any data, a completely blank canvas, not knowing where my health has gone, how, where it's heading. And this is just an astounding picture uh, that today, we, where we were perhaps 10 or 15 years ago in other sectors. And so today I wanted to talk a bit about how I think that the healthcare system is being reinvented and how we're creating a digital health ecosystem that's going to radically change this picture. It's going to change the picture so that in future, the use of apps is going to be as often as antibiotics are prescribed and how the use of personalised and uh, very digitally based uh, health event interventions will be completely common. And how I think that that needs to be really centred around the relationship between patients and clinicians, driven by what we see as a really important digital health ecosystem. So what we're doing at Umotif is building beautiful, simple and engaging mobile and web apps to help people track, manage and understand their health and bring that data back to their clinicians to really power uh, or empower the process of shared decision making. And uh, we're starting the deployment in the first 15 NHS centres. So we think that this is the future. It's digital uh, and it's all around relationships. And of course, this is really important because like many of us here today, we see increasing numbers of headlines about how health systems, including the NHS, are creaking under pressure, failing to deliver high quality services in some cases. Uh, and much of that, um, that pressure is coming from the rise in things like long-term conditions or chronic health conditions. So in Europe, 400 million, uh, and in the US, 255 million people have these chronic or long-term health conditions. Things like Parkinson's, diabetes, heart failure, COPD, or arthritis. So probably all of us know a friend, a family member, an acquaintance, or a colleague who suffers from one of these conditions. So perhaps as I'm talking today, maybe picture someone that you know who's got one of these conditions, because I think what's critically important is what we're doing is helping real people and making a real difference to people's lives. So uh, long-term conditions are, are, are certainly creating lots of pressure, and this is also because they're highly costly. So 70% of healthcare spend in the UK goes on long-term conditions, 768 billion a year, the annual cost. That's more, by the way, than the GDP of Saudi Arabia or the Netherlands, an aston astonishingly high figure. And this is down to things like the long, uh, the long treatment cycles, uh, high cost of drugs and other impacts. But of course, it's not just the economic impact that counts here. This is real impacts on people's lives. People feeling sicker than they should, taking longer to, re to recover than they ought to, perhaps being hospitalised or readmitted where this can be avoided and even dying prematurely. So, of course, over the last decades, there have been a number of reinventions or uh, shifts forward in, in healthcare, which have been fantastic. But the reality in long-term condition management is people still manage on their own. So if you have one of these conditions, Parkinson's, diabetes, you're spending 8,700 hours a year on your own and just three hours a year with your clinician. So people with chronic conditions are already self-managing, perhaps not doing so as proactively, consciously or effectively as they could. And this is where we think that there could be real change. And of course, the reason why people are perhaps not using uh, those 8,700 hours as well as they could is we're still using the same old-fashioned technology as our grandparents would have used. So pill pots, paper diaries, standard printed material, and clinicians' intuition. Still using the old technology, so we're not making those 8,700 hours a year better. And then that blank picture that I showed you at the, at the start, which is far too common in healthcare, a blank picture where clinicians have no insight, no information on how their patients are doing. So what we think is needed is something where digital makes a difference, a new digital health ecosystem that's safe, secure, and scalable, but interoperable, engaging, and low friction, where a number of different parties come together to create uh, the sort of interoperable system we see in other aspects of um, digital technology. But as I say, focused around this relationship between patients and clinicians. <coughs> and so we see a new ecosystem providing the sort of actionable, interesting info, uh, information and data that will drive improvements in care. 
So this insight from data probably leads me on to how, th how that's going to be best used. And when we look at other uh, sectors, where we've seen banking, e-commerce, and so many other areas transformed by dig digital technology, what we can see is that is most effective and most exciting, where to some extent the technology disappears. And what comes to the fore are human behaviors, human relationships. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Zynga, all these great digital experiences focus on dig uh, human relationships, human behaviors. And that's what we think is exactly the same as is needed in healthcare. Because the patient-clinician relationship is millennia old, it's one that's based on reliability, hope, trust, still, of course, an element of deference sometimes, but something that is deep-rooted. And we, we really need to pay attention to these relationships, understand how patients and clinicians best engage, and how digital technology can really empower that sort of trusted relationship that's in place. And so I think what we're going to see over the years ahead is something of perhaps a change or a shift in the power balance between patients and clinicians. So sometimes clinicians are perhaps quite top down uh, and patients can sometimes be sort of just participants. So we see a shift to the future, something which perhaps balances that out with clinicians being something more of a supportive health coach where data can actually uh, improve the relationships between patients and clinicians and support both sides of that equation. So we must understand obviously that some clinician, clinicians aren't going to embrace this and indeed, some patients actually maybe don't want this and aren't, aren't ready to want it now. So I think the challenge today is to get down in the weeds, really understand how things are today, so that we can start working with the fantastic clinicians and patients that want to drive this digital health ecosystem and future, and start working with things today to create this kind of future for tomorrow. What's probably sort of fairly obvious to most of us in this room is that relationship is one that's actually driven or powered by data. And I think this has been picked up on a number of times today, how important that data is. But of course, it's not just data. It's gathering the insight and useful information. I think that's the critical part here, is making sure that that data uh, drives that relationship in a positive way. <clears throat> and just a note, I think, on uh, data privacy, uh, I think, and ownership. We think it's critically important in this new future that it's people owning their own data, being able to control what they see, where the, where the data goes. Because there's increasing evidence, things like Patients Like Me, Health Unlocked, other academic uh, papers, showing that when people understand where their data is going, who's using it, and critically who benefits from that, that they're increasingly happy for that data to be shared. Just yesterday I was reading the latest uh, survey from the US showing that 90% of people are happy for their healthcare data to be shared. And I think that's really critically important to be aware of, that of course we have to be sensible, careful, and considerate about how we maintain data privacy and security. But I think a small plea, in a sense, to any regulators out there is let's not let misconceptions about people want to stand in the way of being able to use this data for incredibly powerful purposes. So I think this leads me on to thinking about who are the people and organizations that should be making some of this change, building and delivering this digital health ecosystem for the future. Well, I think it's uh, the sort of in institutions and organisations that see opportunity first and barriers as distant second. Because we see in other industries that actually sometimes it's the people who are slightly from the outside, something of a respectful outsider that can respect the need in, in healthcare for high quality data, clinical robustness, uh, doing no harm, of course, and cost effectiveness, but that see the opportunity first. In uh, one of the recent Wired magazine interviews with Daniel Ek from Spotify, he comes at it from, this is how I think the world ought to be. And I'd argue that's exactly the same uh, as we need to for healthcare. And what's so exciting about these sort of conferences and the growing network uh, that's out there in the digital health ecosystem is many people are exactly believing in this. Bringing in people from many different se sectors, having the intersection of design, gaming, behaviour change, and so many other uh, sort of specialities that together we can create something new, something special and something different. So I think what we're so excited about is working with the, uh, some more of these respectful outsiders to understand healthcare, but actually drive forward to create something new. Um, and as we think about that, I think the importance of design is something that I just wanted to touch on. Uh, in digital health and in healthcare generally, it's not a sector that's perhaps known for high quality design. But as we get down to the person uh, out there in the, uh, the public who is using one of these new apps, one of these new engaging experiences, we're actually competing against all of the other apps that they use in their daily life to have one of those 150 interactions we have with our phones each day. 
So a design-led approach to this is absolutely critical. Creating solutions that are a design pull, not just a technology push. So we need to be learning as much from Zynga about behavior change as the GMC, for example, and as much from Formula One engineers as uh, established medical device companies. And it's this intersection which we think is going to create the digital health ecosystem of the future. So I think what's so exciting is that this is all a vision for today. This isn't requiring systems uh, across the world to dramatically change. Uh, we're not requiring everything to be uh, in a perfect environment to, to see that this is possible and to make uh, some significant impacts. So it's a vision for today. We, we can deliver this now. Uh, and, uh, and I think that's uh, such an exciting thing to see uh, these sort of conferences to come together. So I wanted to sort of wrap up and finish a bit by telling you a bit of a story, which is uh, uh, last October, uh, Rashmi, our clinical director, and I went to Montreal to the World Parkinson's Congress in, uh, uh, in October. At that conference, there were 3,000 people, mostly patients, but clinicians, high-quality researchers and others. And at that conference, it was an incredible mix of uh, ambition and hope for the future that one day Parkinson's is going to be solved, there's going to be a cure. But balanced with the understanding and the appreciation that probably that's not going to be any day fairly soon. And unfortunately for some of those at their conference, it's the sort of thing that may not actually impact on their lives. So while the cure is definitely the aim and was the overriding ambition, uh, the balance was that people need to live as well as they possibly can today. And that's what's inspired us to start building the type of digital technologies as part of this digital ecosystem that we think are so important, supporting patients uh, and really understanding how they can improve that relationship with their clinicians. So as the global trillion dollar a year healthcare system is changing and people are being increasingly uh, driven to self-manage and supported in doing so, we think that the future is this wonderful, exciting and very optimistic digital health ecosystem where we can come together to make, an ev uh, to make a difference uh, and demonstrate in, uh, evidence of that impact. Thanks. So Bruce, this is not just theory. You've got apps out there now and you're working with people with conditions like Parkinson's, and diabetes, and post-operative care. Tell us briefly how people are using some of your most popular apps yeah. and what results you're learning. Yeah. Um, so what we've learned over the last sort of 19 months or so working directly with patients and clinicians is that, that, that people find it most, uh, most valuable and they're getting the most out of it where they can see where their data is really powering a conversation with their clinicians. So tracking in a beautiful and simple way some data. But so if I have diabetes, what am I tracking? So uh, we, uh, we, we have uh, an app that comprises a number of modules that is subjective tracking, so things like your mood, how you're feeling, do you feel you're, you're well in control of your symptoms, as well as more numeric data, so, so things like your blood glucose. And it's the combination of the subject and objective that's brought back to clinicians in a pre-formatted health report. So the doctor gets a dashboard? Yes. Yeah. So am I worried that that data will leak out? So we, we put data ownership in your hands. So anything that you capture using uh, Umotif app, that it's your data. Uh, and that you've, you, you will sort of allow your clinicians to view that data. But it's your data. We, our position is we shouldn't own that as a company. Okay. That's, it's about your health. It's yours. And briefly, um, for Umotif, what other medical conditions are you looking to produce apps to yeah. help communicate? So uh, the next uh, patient groups are oncology, um, heart failure, uh, rheumatology, and uh, renal, so people with uh, kidney, kidney failure. Great, thank you for sharing the story. <laughs>